फाइव सेकेंड्स टू गो स्टार्ट मिस्टर डेप्टी चेयरमैन आई थैंक यू फॉर हैविंग गिवन मी दिस अपॉर्चुनिटी टू एक्सप्रेस माय व्यूज ऑन द सब्जेक्ट अंडर डिस्कशन द वर्किंग ऑफ द मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ एनर्जी सिंस द ऑनरेबल मेंबर हु स्पोक बिफोर टुक एग्जैक्टली थर्टी मिनट्स सिंस दिस इज माय मेडन स्पीच आई वुड रिक्वेस्ट यू सर टू गिव मी एट लीस्ट फिफ्टीन मिनिट्स एट द आउटसेट आई विश टू एश्योर यू सर एंड ऑल द ऑनरेबल मेंबर्स हियर दैट आई एम फुली अवेयर ऑफ द नोबल ट्रेडिशंस ऑफ दिस ऑगस्त असेंबली विच सिंस इट्स इंसेप्शन हैज बीन एंड कॉन्टीन्यूज टू बी अ मीटिंग प्लेस ऑफ सम ऑफ द फाइनेस्ट इंटेलैक्ट्स इन आवर कंट्री ऑफ स्कॉलर्स स्टेट्समैन एंड टावरिंग पर्सनैलिटीज हु हैव डिस्टिंग यूज themselves in diverse fields much comments has been made in the press recently about the present infusion of young blood into this house of elders i hasten to reassure you sir and all the senior members here that they need harbor no apprehension on this score i give you my solemn word that i shall never fail to uphold the dignity prestige and decorum of the rajya sabha and i shall do nothing to detract from the house that has been added to it by the luminous personalities who have graced these hallowed portals who are no longer with us and to whom i pay my respectful homage as a new entrant i deem it a great honor to stand here and speak on the floor of the very same rajya sabha where 36 years ago in 1962 our great departed leader rose to make his forceful maiden speech which electrified the entire nation while electrified the whole country with his maiden speech the theme of my maiden speech today is going to be dedicated mainly to the subject of electricity my leader has sent me here together with my colleagues in the party to echo the voice of the people of tamil nadu in this national forum in particular i have come here as the representative of the weaker sections of our society the toiling masses the crores of humble workers to give oral manifestation to their feelings and legitimate desires and make them known to the rest of the country there are many members here who are far more knowledgeable than i am and vastly richer in experience some of them may disagree with some of the views 
I put forth. I wish to emphasize the fact that the fundamental purpose of my speaking here in the Rajya Sabha is not to engage in wordy duels with other members but to state positive truths to the best of my knowledge and to draw the attention of the nation to certain crucial issues. Tamil Nadu has been facing acute shortage of electricity for more than a decade. The state government was forced to impose power cuts ranging from 25% to 100% intermittently from 1991-92 onwards to overcome the shortage. As a result of the repeated power cuts, the industrial and agricultural production in the state has been affected adversely and drastically. Tamil Nadu has very meager hydel potential. Many of the economical hydel potential has either already been exploited or is already on the anvil. The balance potential is either tied up in interstate disputes or is too small and seasonal for economic exploitation. The only fossil fuel that is available in the state is lignite and efforts have already been undertaken to utilize this potential in an optimum manner. Tamil Nadu has almost exhausted its hydel resources and has no coal resources at all. For setting up more coal-based thermal stations, there are formidable constraints in that coal has to be hauled over long distances either from Andhra Pradesh or from Bengal or Bihar, rendering the cost too high and the availability of coal uncertain. It was in this context that the state government passed for the location of a nuclear plant in the state and the government of India was kind enough to concede the demand by sanctioning the Madras Atomic Power Project with a capacity of 235 megawatt in 1967. Later, in eighth five-year plan, the second unit also with a generation capacity of 235 megawatt was also sanctioned. At the time, there was a clear understanding between the state and the central governments that the entire output from Kalpakam would be allocated solely to Tamil Nadu to meet the urgent and pressing needs of the state. In the year 1988, when the necessary lands were acquired for the project, the government of Tamil Nadu agreed to make available free of cost 2,500 acres of land required for the project. The lands were valued 
at about rupees 53 lakhs this commitment was based on the confirmation given by the madras atomic power project authorities to the effect that in return the entire energy output from the project would be sold to tamil nadu stop